Hey, well, I'm Peter Darby. I'm the hop breeder at Y Hops Limited, which is the successor to Y College. The college programme goes back to 1906 and it's been a continuous hop breeding for over 100 years. I've been breeding hops for over 35, 36 years, 37 years now this year, um, here at Y Hops. We are here showing PBS what, what we do with their, their bags. This is, this is a male plant, quite different from the females, and it, this one is in full pollen throw. If you just tap, you can see the amount of pollen that comes off. What we're doing here is collecting the, the pollen. We are trying to get it just before, although here we haven't quite made it, but just before the flowers open so that all of this pollen goes into, into the bag. But we snip off the, what the Americans call side arms, we call laterals and we remove as much of the leaf as possible. That will now dry overnight and the pollen will be sieved off tomorrow morning and uh, stored ready for, ready for use. Okay, these bags from PBS are bespoke bags. They're made specially for us to the dimensions we want with the window that we want were. So uh, the size is, is deliberately so that we can get it on to these vines. Uh, if they were any bigger, there'd be too much to gather together to seal. If they're any smaller, there wouldn't be enough room for the plant to, to be inside here without getting too full of leaf and so on. So they are the optimum size with a window so we can see what is happening. So we know when, if we can see the flowers, we know when to introduce the pollen that we want to that. It's the best place to have a sleeve. Every plant will flower differently. Some will tend to flower more at the top, some will flower more evenly. So we'll choose the correct place, which looks to be about there. One of the main purposes of the pollination bag is, is to exclude pollen from outside in the, in the environment, in the air. And because this sleeve is on, this particular flower is still waiting to be pollinated. And that allows us to um, place the pollen that we want from the correct male that has the qualities that we want and um, allows us to collect the correct seed from inside the bag. So here, here we've got one, this is a very early variety and it's already going into cone. So we have the flowers and these each of these flowers. The flowers are actually the um, a modified branch and they, the cone will be produced whether or not it's pollinated. But here you see the stages going into small cones and then into larger cones and larger cones still. And about four weeks from now, five weeks from now, that will be ready for harvest. This is a very early variety. On, on this side, we have the commercial crop where the main aim is uniformity. It's to have every plant at the same stage at the same time. Whereas these are our plots, and here what we're looking for is diversity. We're trying to get as much, pull out as much difference between the different varieties as we can. So two very different aims, in, in same system for growing, but two very different, different aims. Okay, the, the building blocks of the breeding program is the germplasm. And this is our germplasm collection. This has been established over well, 40 or 50 years and are the tried and tested varieties. The varieties that we know are good parents 
or that we have used in the programme to date. And this is a permanent collection, it's a permanent living collection. Uh, we, they, they're not part of the turnover of materials that the rest of the hop garden is. This is here for always. I always reg liken it to a piano keyboard. If ever, all the notes are there, you can play any tune, but if some are missing, then you're very limited in what you can do. And so the more extensive the germplasm collection, the more opportunities we have for the breeding programme. And we have in here about 400 female hop varieties. Some are named varieties, but most are just numbered selections. And these have the traits that we are interested in for the breeding programme. This weedy patch here, it's good that it's weedy because it shows that they're getting enough moisture. But these are the seedlings that we planted this year. These are the crosses we made in last year in 2017. Uh, we raised them in plants, sowed the seed in February and raised them in the glass house, screened them for pests and for diseases and about 13, 1400 have come out into this field. They were planted at the end of May and to be honest they've had no rainfall here since the end of May, it's now the middle of July, which is really unusual, which is why it's essential that we have irrigation. These have no rootstock, they're coming from a seed, and the whole purpose of this year is for them to establish a perennial rootstock. In a year's time, the growth won't look like this, it'll look like that over there. You saw those little plants down there, which were this year's seed. These are last year's seed, these were planted, so sown in the great greenhouse, in February 17 and a year later they're almost full-size plants. They've developed a perennial rootstock and these will come back year in year out but we keep them here. This is this will be the first year of assessment. We have the main assessment next year and then the th third year they're used for propagation because they're all individuals and if we're interested in any one of them we need to propagate it so we don't lose it. Once we're happy that we've got it propagated then these, this area comes out and is ready for the next set of seedlings. Hop breeding has some major successes and this is the variety Y target from cross made in 1965 and released in 1972 which is very very quick because of the need for it. This variety basically saved the English hop industry. During the early late 60s and early 70s the industry was going down with a soil borne disease called verticillium wilt it was, but it, was foot and, it was the foot and mouth of the hop world. It, it killed the hop plants and uh, the hop industry was disappearing in front of your eyes. This was the first variety with really strong resistance to verticillium wilt and it was rushed out to farms in 1972 and proved the saviour of the English hop industry because it allowed hop growing to continue despite the presence of the disease. Some people say that it saved the industry. Others say that it half killed the industry because this variety produces three times as much brewing potential as the older traditional varieties that it replaced. So it, when it went in you only needed a third of the acreage to have the same output in terms of brewing. So although it did save the industry, less industry in terms of acreage was required. Still as productive but from less area. And this variety has been much used in the, in the breeding programme for its resistance to wilt.